In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will take a look at center of gravity and centroid, wherein we are going to learn the relations for center of gravity and centroid. We will also learn about centroid of regular plane areas and composite areas. Previously, we have learned that every mass containing body is attracted to the center of the earth due to gravity. This is also called as the weight of the body. Previously, in introduction to engineering mechanics, we also have learned that any force can be completely defined when all its characteristics are specified. One of the characteristics is the point of application. The weight of a body being a force also must act through a point on the body. This point of application is termed as the center of gravity. Hence, the location of the center of gravity becomes important while dealing with the weight force. Consider you're trying to balance a notebook on your finger. You try to balance the book at different positions along its surface, but at only one point can the book be perfectly balanced. This point is called as the center of gravity of the book. A point through which the whole weight of a body is assumed to act is defined as the center of gravity of the body. This term is used for all actual physical bodies of any shape, size or proportion. Example, book, car, human beings, bridges, dams, etc. The importance of centroid is same as center of gravity. This term is used for center gravity of plane, two-dimensional or one-dimensional geometrical objects. For example, two-dimensional figures, areas like a triangle, square, rectangle, circle, or for one-dimensional figures, wire bends or lines like straight lines, curved arc, wires, etc. In this topic, we will learn to find the centroid of plane areas. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Let us now learn the relation to find the center of gravity. Consider a body of weight W as shown in the figure. The center of gravity of this body is at point G, X bar, Y bar. Let us now split the body into n parts arbitrarily. Hence, each part will have its own individual element weight, Wi, acting through its center of gravity located at Gi, having coordinates as Xi, Yi. All the individual weights W1, W2, W3, Wi, Wn together form a system of parallel forces. The resultant weight of the body, that is W, is therefore given by the summation of the weights of all the parts of the body. We will use Varignan's theorem to locate the point of application of the resultant weight force W. First, we will take moments about Y axis. Moments of individual weights about y axis equals moment of the total weight about y axis. Thus, we can derive a relation of x bar, the x coordinate of the center of gravity of the body in terms of the individual weights of the parts and their respective x coordinates. Similarly, taking moments about x axis. Moments of individual weights about x axis equals moment of the total weight about x axis. Thus, we can derive a relation for y bar, the y coordinate of the center of gravity of the body in terms of the individual weights of the parts and their respective y coordinates. The relation 1 and 2 are used to locate the center of gravity g of a body having coordinates x bar, y bar. Let us now learn the relation to find the centroid. We have previously learned that weight equals mass into gravitational pull. But we know that mass of an object is equal to the product of its density and its volume. Thus we can say that the weight of a body is equal to the product of its density, cross-sectional area, its thickness and the gravitational pull. For uniform bodies, that is of same density and thickness throughout the body, we can substitute the value of weight in equations 1 and 2. Thus, we can derive a relation for x bar, the x coordinate of the centroid of the body, in terms of the individual areas of the parts and their respective x coordinates. Similarly, we derive the relation for the y coordinate 
of the centroid y bar. The relations 3 and 4 are used to locate the centroid g of a plane area having coordinates x bar y bar. The table given shows the centroids of regular plane areas. Consider a rectangle of base B and depth D. Its area would be B into D. The X coordinate of its centroid would be B by 2 and the Y coordinate would be D by 2. Now consider a triangle of base B and height H. Its area would hence be half into B into H. Further, its centroid would have its X coordinate as B by 2 and Y coordinate as H by 3. Similarly, the table gives us the area X and Y coordinates of the centroid of basic plane areas like semicircle and sector having an included angle of 2 alpha. The angle is to be considered in radians at the marked places. The coordinates X bar, Y bar of the centroid G are with respect to the axis shown in the respective figures. These formulae form the base to find the centroid of composite areas and further calculations. Hence, these formulae are deemed important. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Now we will learn to find the centroid of a composite area. An area which is made up of a number of regular plane areas is known as a composite area. To locate the centroid of a composite area, as shown in the diagram A, we use the following steps. Divide the composite area into regular plane areas, namely rectangle, semicircle and a right angle triangle as shown in the figure B. The centroid of the rectangle, semicircle and the triangle are marked using the formulae for regular plane areas. Mark the centroids G1, G2, G3 of all the regular areas as shown in the figure B. And then find their coordinates with respect to the given axis, that is OX and OY. Let the area of a regular part be AI and the coordinates are XI and YI. Tabulate the values as shown below. The table includes the data of each of the parts required to find the centroid of the entire area. Add up the areas of the different parts to get the total area. Add up the product of area and X coordinate of different parts to obtain its summation. Add up the product of area and Y coordinate of different parts to obtain summation. The coordinates of the centroid of the composite figure can be obtained by using relations 3 and 4 derived previously. Using the following steps, we can find the centroid of any composite area. Consider the following problem. Find the centroid of the shaded area shown. The composite area can be divided into rectangle, a right angle triangle and a semicircle as shown above. Mark the centroids of these three parts as G1, G2 and G3 as shown below. We will now tabulate the values of the three parts. The areas and the coordinates of centroids of the different parts are first entered in the table. The areas are calculated using the standard formulae for basic geometry. Add up the areas of the different parts to get the total area. Add up the product of area and X coordinate of different parts to obtain its summation. Add up the product of area and Y coordinate of different parts to obtain summation. Using these two formulae, we can find the X coordinate and the Y coordinate of centroid of the shaded area. Thus, we have found the centroid of the shaded area to be located at the point 6.21, 5.9 in centimeters. Let's have a quick review of what we've studied in this lecture. A point through which the whole weight of a body is assumed to act is defined as the center of gravity of the body. The term centroid is used for center gravity of plane, two-dimensional or one-dimensional geometrical objects. Then we derive the equation to find the coordinates of center of gravity of a body by dividing it into small parts. Similarly, 
We derive the equations to find the coordinates of centroid of a uniform body by dividing it into small parts. Next, we learned about centroid of regular plane areas. The table gives us the formulae for the areas x and y coordinates of the centroid for the following area. Then, we learned about composite areas. An area which is made up of a number of regular plane areas is known as a composite area. The following steps were followed to find the centroid of a composite area. In simple words, we divide the composite area into a few regular plane areas. Then, we use the table to enter the area and the coordinates of centroids of different parts. Finally, we use the following formulae to find the centroid.